Hello, beautiful human. Thanks for clicking on our conversation with CK. We have a lot to discuss, okay? Please leave your honest feedback in the comment section below. Hit like on this video and subscribe. And remember that all of our interviews have been first live on Amazon's AMP. We are reimagining radio. You can create your own radio show if you want. Just download the AMP app. There's a link in the description below. Everything's in the description, including the uh, code to get in. Beautiful human, all caps. Okay, you're beautiful, and we got things to get to. Let's talk to CK. Hello, beautiful human. How are you? Let's welcome to the studio, CK. <laughs> Woo. Thanks for having me, man. Yo. What's going on? It really is, uh, it's an honor to have you here for a bunch of different reasons, because you truly are a global artist. You're a global artist that uses the internet at, at, at a very unique time in, I think, world's the, the, the world's history, but also the history of culture, right? Mm -hmm. To utilize it to, to send a message and to get your art out there. And uh, you're really fascinating the more I read about you. So thanks for hanging out. Thanks for having me. Uh, you are from Nigeria, correct? Mm -hmm. Is it, 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 like, can you just explain to me, like, what culture and music is like there? Like, are, you must be the biggest thing in the world there. Yeah, so Nigeria is a, there's, like, over 80 ethnic groups, but there's, like, three major ones. Hausa, Yoruba, and Igbo. So I'm Igbo. And uh, Love One Tinsi is half Igbo, half Pidgin English. So Pidgin English is like a, it's like a version of English spoken in West Africa. You know, it's like, uh, it's English, but it's like mixed with slangs and stuff. Mm. You know what I mean? So yeah, Love One Tinsi is both. And uh, yeah, we speak that in Nigeria. It's a really interesting vibe, you know. Um, great food, great people, great, uh, great fashion too. Like there's a burgeoning fashion scene in nigeria as well and um yeah it's just it's just full of vibes man you said that you made the song to be global mm -hmm. but are you surprised at all at the fact that like the song without doing much modifications outside of a couple different remixes but like the the essence and the lyrics of the song say the same has become uh the hit that it has yeah i mean so to be fair when i was making the song in that moment, I was just really trying to express myself, you know. Um, I was in a relationship and I was just, you know, expressing how I felt about my girlfriend through the song, you know. So um, I was in my living room. I was making a beat. And after I made the beat, I did a freestyle. Um, and I went to bed. Like, this was, like, close to midnight, you know. And, like, uh, I was going to put words to the ah, 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 ah in the morning. But, like, when I heard it in the morning, it was amazing so i left it <laughs> you know basically so that's how the song happened and um yeah when i when i finished making the song i was like oh shit this could be actually like this could be huge you know like i could see in my head i could already see people from different like um ethnicities singing the song because it's like it's such a vibe and it's like i think it's easy it's a sticky song like even even in my immediate environment when I made the song, everyone around me caught the song like immediately. Everyone liked it. Everyone could sing it from the very beginning. So I kind of knew from that point. And um, the remixes, they were very organic, you know, like lots of artists kept reaching out that they wanted to do remixes for the song. I actually still get requests till today. <laughs> like it's insane. And, um, yeah, like, I just, I literally just went with the people I vibe with, you know. One of the most prominent ones being El Grande Toto from Morocco. And we did a, the North African remix. We literally did that the day before my deadline. Because um, I had, like, four remixes. I had the East African one. I had the, I had a South African one. I had a Latin one. And uh, the Moroccan one literally came, like, the day before my deadline and he sent me a dm and he's like yo this song is crazy let's do a moroccan remix and i'm like yo okay but my deadline is tomorrow though <laughs> so i'm like <laughs> you have to record it today and he recorded it today you know and it's so crazy how that version became like so huge and so successful i mean all the versions are successful but that one kind of stood out you know why what, what was different i don't know i think 
I think we just vibed, me and him, you know? And, like, even outside the song, we became good friends afterwards. And, um, yeah, it was, it was, it resonated with people in the Arab world and in the French speaking countries heavily, you know? It means small love. That's the title. Yeah. But it's, when I was reading about it, it's attached to the adage of like treat others the way you want to be treated. Mm, Is that wrong? Not necessarily. I mean, love wantingty in the context I used it. It means small love, but it it's like, it's a sexual reference too in the song. You know what I mean? So it's basically like give me a little bit of this love that can make a bad man sing, literally. You know what I mean? So, um, yeah, pretty much. In Igbo, love wantingty means a little bit of love. And, um, yeah, the whole song is just about that. You know? So does it start w- w- when you're creating it? Like uh, there's a sexual undertone or sexual connection. Of course. of course. I mean. Is I'm, most of the music that you, I mean, is it wrong to say that like you, cr- it, it is Afrobeats, but it's more emotional. There's, it's exactly. like, there's depth to it. Yeah. So if I call, I call my sub genre of Afrobeats emo Afrobeats because it's it's really honestly different from the conventional Afrobeat record because Afrobeat is heavy on the rhythm, it's heavy on dancing, it's heavy on movement. Um, but like for me, going going into that space, I'm like, okay, if I'm making music, I have to do something different. I have to bring something new to the sound. There's literally no point of me making Afrobeats if it's gonna sound like every other Afrobeat song. So. I put my energy into the Afrobeat. I put my emotional energy into the song. And um, you dance to it. You can dance to it. But it's like you feel things too mm. while you're dancing to it. So that's kind of my thing in general. What, what, what kind of what, what kind of room does that type of music breed like that you're creating it in? Like are you dancing? Are you singing? Like, are you sad? Like what, what what's the energy in the studio? Do you get what I'm saying? Um. And how do songs start? Does it start with a story or do you put it to a beat that's already done? Nah, so um, I was literally, when I made Love Wants I was literally in a, I just got into the relationship actually. Okay. So um, it was a very regular night in Lagos. I was in uh, my living room. So I make most of my own beats, you know? So I was making a beat like I always do. And um, after I made the beat, I freestyled on the beat, you know? Um... And that was it, literally. You know, the next day I did the second verse and the third verse. And um, I had a co-producer named Tempo to add some stuff to it after that. And that was it. Do you end up making Felony and Kiss Me Like I Love You the exact same way? No. So Felony was actually produced by someone else. His name is Oxy. So he sent me the beats. And like, uh, yeah, that one, I, I made some modifications to the beat though. But like... The beat was done when he sent it to me. And I, like, did my thing on it. Um, Kiss Me Like You Miss Me, I produced that one. Um, I was literally in my bedroom. I was just vibing. I was playing guitar. And, like, yeah, the song was done. Kind of the same thing as Love Wines Into. Sorry, I got the name wrong. I wrote it down wrong. Kiss Sorry. Me Like You Miss Me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. <laughs> but, but Okay, but that, you go back to, you do the beat yourself and you freestyle? Yeah. But that one, too, I had a co-producer add some stuff after I finished the whole song. Got it. Which do you feel the most comfortable doing? Making a beat and freestyling or taking somebody else's work and adding to it? To be honest, it's hard to say because um, making the beat myself is more like, it's more work, you know? But um, it's also nice to have someone who's on my wavelength make something that fits my vibe Mm. and I just do my thing on it. But then... I also enjoy making my beats too because it's like, you know, it's a very seamless line of communication from my brain to my ears. Like I know exactly what I want to hear and I know how to make what I want to hear. So I just do it. There's no there's no communication gap. But sometimes when you're working with someone else, you know, there's a bit of a gap sometimes mm-hmm. unless like you and the producer, you guys have been working for a long time and you've built that chemistry are you building that with anybody yeah um there's this guy named bmh he's nigerian he co-produced emiliana 
he could produce Kiss Me Like You Miss Me, and he could produce Felony. We have a pretty good vibe. So I work with him a lot. I saw you were in the studio with Diplo recently. What's I the was. chemistry like with that? Or is it, is it, yeah, what's Yo, like meeting someone new like him? Yeah, Diplo is really cool. You know, we actually met in Miami before we got in the studio. And uh, yeah, he's a really great guy, really good energy. Um, he's a student of in, like international global music. Mm hmm. I mean, it shows, you know. Yeah. <laughs> and yeah, he's a really nice guy, chill guy. We made a really, really interesting song, you know. What do you mean and by interesting? Like, it's really good and it's different, you know. I'm a huge fan of different. Yeah. You know, so yeah. How do you know it's different? And at what point in the creation process do you know that this song is different? Well, from the beat, first of all, I'm very key on how a beat makes me feel. When I hear it, like, you know, music music in itself is basically emotions in MP3s, you know? Different mm -hmm. types of emotions, different intensities of emotions, you know. So when I hear a beat, I'm, I'm paying attention to how I'm feeling when I'm listening to it. So the beat he played for me made me feel very interesting. Mm -hmm. <laughs> you know? It was a very interesting feeling I had, which is different. Like, I don't, I haven't felt like that every time someone plays me a beat, you know. And when I did my thing on it, it was equally interesting, <laughs> you know. When you're, like, taking in, I, I mean, do you control how the communication works between, like, hearing a beat in your head and, like, creating it? Or does it just come randomly to you? How does that, like, do you get what I'm saying? Like, how you mean? How you mean? Like, do you need to sit down and, like, be in a setting to then, like, create a beat or can you just be going about your day and then get an idea and then oh. have to go into a studio? Um, okay. So it works like this. So sometimes like while I'm going about my day, I just have like an idea and like I, I bring out my phone and I record a voice note. or sometimes it's a line mm. that comes to me, a very interesting line. And I just write it down or I could be in the studio and I could just be like, you know, while I'm sitting down, I could just make a beat based on how I'm feeling. Um, I play the piano pretty well. I play guitar. So I kind of know how to, you know, um, I kind of know how to interpret my ideas in real life. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And I just take it from there. You know, I follow the vibe and I arrive at the, I arrive at a song. So can you force yourself to make music if you need to? I can, but it, it will probably not have soul, mm -hmm. you know? when I'm actually feeling something and I actually have something to say, the music is always different from when I'm just like making a song because, you know. Are the lyrics you're writing attached to your reality? Absolutely. Every song I make is about something I experienced, you know, or something I felt or something I'm feeling at the time of writing the song. What about Felony? Where, 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 what story are you telling with that record? So Felony was um, about me being in a relationship after like a long time of not being in a relationship, you know, um, I was kind of avoiding relationships for a while because the last one didn't go very well, you know, and I was a, I was a little bit damaged. So I kind of, <laughs> I was kind of staying away, but then like, you know, every now and then in your life, there's always that person you meet that just like makes you, you know, change your mind <laughs> about things, you know, so that's kind of where felony came from. When that person comes into your life, you want to hold on to him, right? Absolutely. Yeah. Gosh. Who taught you how to produce or did you teach yourself? Um, it was a friend of mine. Um, we went to elementary school together, but he was like, he was like five years older than me. He was actually my brother's, my elder brother's friend. So we used to hang out and like, uh, yeah, we we didn't see each other for like five years. And when my family moved to a new house, it turns out he was living right next door. Oh. So um turns out in those five years, he started making beats, you know, and he played me a beat he made. And I was like, whoa. Yeah, so I'm like, bro, you have to teach me this thing, you know, and he did. He taught me, but he just taught me the basics, you know. I was I was trying to get him to teach me more, but he was really slippery. <laughs> so I kind of figured out the rest on my own, you know. I was just like experimenting, you know, doing doing stuff, failing, getting better, blah 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 until I became really good mm -hmm. at it, you know. 
your parents, like your mom's a nurse, right? And your dad's a doctor. Mm-hmm. I mean, what do they think of all this? <laughs> I mean, when I told them I wanted to do music the first time, they they didn't let me. I wanted to move to Lagos. They didn't let me. So I literally ran away from home to do music. So, I mean, right now, <clears throat> I mean, it feels good to be right. <laughs> <laughs> I'm not going to lie. But, uh, yeah, right now they're very much with the program. Very much so. <laughs> well, your story's crazy because technically you're you're signed to Warner South Africa? Mm-hmm. Right now, yeah. That's, uh, it, because all, like, do you know when the last time a hit song has come from your territory of the world? Uh, I don't know. But, like, I'm actually not from South Africa. I'm actually Nigerian. But but still, yeah. I mean, e- even from a Nigerian artist. But also then to I have mean, it signed to a label that's not, like, originally around here in the States. I mean, it's, it's a huge yeah. it's a huge song. Yeah. But right now, in the States, though, um, I work with Atlantic. Yeah, because yeah, it's, you know, it's a like partner. A, yeah, it's like a network thing. But, like, I mean, I guess there's been ton, tons of Afrobeat songs. And African songs that have been big, like Burner Boy, Wizkid, mm. David Doe. Oh, uh, Wizkid, Essence. Um, isn't, isn't Wizkid from Nigeria? He is. You're right. Yeah. Yeah. And um, even from South Africa, there's been Jerusalem. You know, that was really massive as well. And like, you know, I'm a piano, which is going crazy right now, too. It's from South Africa. So, yeah, every now and then there's a song that, you know, comes out of Africa that's like global. And I am happy to be one of those. Is there pressure to do it again? Well, I mean, not for me, though. <laughs> There's probably pressure, but not for me. I don't put pressure on myself. I focus on just making great music. I feel like the world loves great music. So if the music is great, people will love it. So I put pressure on making great music. How do you know a song is great? And is every song great? Not every song is great. Some songs are good. Some songs are okay. Is there a place? Some songs are great. Is there a place in your catalog for good songs? Yeah, they're 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 good songs. But even my good songs are great, in my opinion. I, I just how do you define great? It is great. It, it has to be different though in every case, right? There's not yeah. one answer to what makes a great song. Absolutely not. I think music is highly subjective. And the reason why it's subjective, to be fair, there's the subjective part of music and there's the objective part. So subjectively, it's like, how much do you connect with the song when you hear it? Because music is is art hmm. for the most part, you know? Oh, I mean, there's, there's, a sci- there's a science to it, you know? But then the artistic side of it is the part that kind of, you know, surpasses logic. You know what I mean? Like when you play a song and it just hits, it hits. Like if people feel that song, no matter what the laws or the rules are of songwriting or hit songs, it doesn't matter if it's too slow or if it's too fast. I mean, like the label I was signed to, for instance, when I released Love One Tinty, you know, they didn't really think it was a single, for instance, because it was not fast. (laughs) You know what I mean? But then this goes back to what I'm saying. When it hits and it connects, the rules become immaterial. Yeah, the, it, it, It's crazy, though, that they still hold the rules and, and put things against the rules yeah. with knowing that things, some things don't get the chance to emotionally connect. Yeah. Yeah, unfortunately. Yeah, but I mean, it, it, it's calm, you know. The objective side, though, of music is, like, is it sonically pleasing, like, you know are the instruments on key is you know is the music excellent in itself like on a you know if you're judging it on a musical basis you know and then there's a connection part so having these two together makes a great song what have you learned from this massive hit that you're taking with you as you create moving forward I've learned a lot of things, but the one thing I'm going to say is just keep it real. Like, literally, music is a product, but it's art first before it's a product. You can only sell it when it's art. 
you know when people actually connect with it when it's real when it comes from somewhere when it's you know it's not just melodies it's melodies that have soul in it you know what i mean and i've learned that when that's the case the language is not even that much of an issue it like i have matter. i have a Amer- i have like literal white people singing Igbo. that's so crazy mm-hmm. like nigerians i actually find it so interesting when they see like you know people who are not nigerian singing love wanting because they're like whoa you know <laughs> like, but see like to, the, to my point like that's why i think the song means so much because it is like it is a language that mm-hmm. people don't understand but they for some reason they figured it out like they exactly, now yeah. know that, that reason is what i was saying earlier like when it connects it just connects. yeah you know so like is there do you think you'll be able to do it again <laughs> well what i think i'll be able to do again is keep making great music from my heart the rest is out of my control but i will make great music for sure you can count on that <laughs> do, do you feel like love Montiti is the best song you've released well best is relative but maybe not no i don't think it's my is the best song i've released it's one of the best songs i've released well it seems like uh, emiliana did i pronounce that right mm-hmm. it seems like that's starting to really take off now it is it's going crazy like you know, it started trending on TikTok in the first month, you know, which is so crazy because, like, I don't really be making songs trying to get them to be TikTok songs. I don't know. I think TikTok just likes me. <laughs> <laughs> you know? Are you on there? Are you posting? What's crazy? I'm actually on there, but I'm not even on there like that, you know? Yeah. Like, I just, to me, TikTok is like TV. I come on there and I, like, I see a bunch of interesting stuff. Sometimes I make my own content and like, like I just go about my life. Man. Like you're not in the car like lip syncing to your own song like some of the other musicians, are you? I mean, have I, you? I listen before I release a song. One thing I'm gonna tell you before I release a song, I listen to that song like maybe two million times <laughs> before releasing. So before Love Wanted came out, before y'all started like vibing to it, I was vibing to it like <laughs> months before. And I was already like, I wouldn't say I was over it, you know, because I still listen to it. But like, I caught the bug before everyone else. So like right now, I'm listening to the stuff I haven't released yet, Mm. you know, and I'm listening to it every single day, you know, and I can't wait for you guys to listen to it, too. Are you getting the same feeling that you got when you were listening the last time? Yeah, the feeling of. This song, what I'm saying, I can actually remember, like, where it came from, you know? Like, every time I hear a song I make, I remember the circumstances that the song came from, the person it's about, you know, how I felt. So every time I make a song and I I can feel that way, then I know it's a great song. As you grow, do you think your songs will take on new meaning to you? Maybe. I mean, every every song is like a time capsule to me so like love one tinty as much as it's it's the song that changed my life it's you know it's all that it's also a song that reminds me of a of a very specific relationship too you know so it's like it brings back memories every time i hear it good or bad both does the person who was in your life at the time or maybe it's a bad i don't know know that it they had something to do with it yeah absolutely are they still around no i mean we weren't even together when the song came out but we're together when i made the song got it yeah unfortunately why unfortunately i mean that relationship gave you a song that changed your life yeah but uh i don't know I guess I guess when a good thing goes bad, it's unfortunate. <laughs> that is sad. Yeah, but it's cool. I'm over it. You know, I've I mean, been well, over it. It's I mean, been the song came out like four years ago, right? Three, four yeah, years ago. Three years. Yeah, 2019. Yeah. Why do you think the song has just continued to grow and grow and grow? To be fair, I mean, there's a whole story as to how the song came to this point, but um, let's just say. It takes some time for a song to travel from Nigeria to 
the whole world. Yeah. Across like 7 billion people. And know? it's still going. It's still going, you know. So, yeah, I think it's it, the song passed through its own process to get to where it is. Now, who is Emiliana? Is that is that a specific person? Yes, it is. Did you use her actual name as the title or did you make up a different name for her? Yes, I did. I used her actual name. Did, wow. Did you get permission? <laughs> <laughs> um, <laughs> you were about to say no. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Well, um, um, no. <laughs> so she clearly knows it's about her because it's named after her. Yeah. Does she call you afterwards? Or yeah. Is she cool with it? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> are, are you in a relationship right now? Um, I'm in a relationship with my music. I know it's cliche, no. but yes. Well, how, how do you, you it makes sense? You uh, named a song after a person. Yeah. Well, how do you find inspiration if you're not in a relationship? Like where do you find inspiration if it's not through someone else? Sometimes I find inspiration through past relationships, like mm -hmm. or you know, there there's always those moments in your life, those memorable moments. Even if you're not in those moments at the time, you know, it's easy to relive them, you know. So for me, if I'm not in a relationship at the time I'm making a song, I can always tap into my countless memories. You know, I have so many experiences to talk about. So it's easy for me to just pick one of those and talk about them. You know? How do you define success? In music or in general? In general. Success is when you set out to do something and you did it. Have you done that? I'm doing that. I'm in the process of doing it. What have you set out to do? I've set out to take over the world with my music. And I'm currently doing that. I'm still doing it. But it's, you know, I'm not even close to done to where I'm trying to, you know, go. In 2017, you answered the question, who the fuck is CK? Mm -hmm. uh, you provided the world an answer in the form of an EP. Yeah, I mean, <laughs> it wasn't the world, in quote, at the time. It was no. like... It yeah. was like, uh, it was actually a mixtape. Sorry. And it was on SoundCloud, but like, yeah, it ended up on streaming platforms. But um, yeah, it was like from, uh, so the rapper who signed me the first time, his name is M.I. He was in an interview with, with a journalist in Nigeria. And like, you know, there was like a heated argument between them. And like, basically he was, he was questioning his abilities as a CEO, you know, at the time. He, he was criticizing the label and he was like, you know, at the end of the... I don't know, one thing led to one thing and he said, who the fuck is CK? <laughs> you, know, you know what I mean? Basically, it was like a jab, you know what I mean? So um, I started trending on Twitter for like three, four days straight, you know? Sick. Yeah, so we just... I just decided to put out a mixtape, you know, at the time. So I put together a bunch of songs that, you know, I had that I, you know, liked, and I put it out on the EP. And, like, every single song in that EP, what's so funny is every single song on that EP, it represents a, a specific um, pocket of culture and of Afrobeats. And my music today has traces of that still. You know what I mean? Yeah, it set the tone for what you'd be doing. Yeah. So you, you essentially found out who you were by answering the question. I didn't find out. I just, I just dropped a mixtape. I always knew who I was. No, but but by creating <laughs> that, you were able to figure out. I mean, at least some sort of a sound. No, or like a collection uh, yeah. of sounds that you enjoy that can make up what you do moving forward. Yeah, I would say, I would say that mixtape kind of, you know, gave me some insight into, you know, um, it gave me a very good picture of, of how different people from different parts of the world reacted to different pockets of the Afrobeats I made. You know, like Afrobeat like I said, Afrobeats is a really, really wide genre. Yeah. You know? And there is the conventional Afrobeats. There's the very street Afrobeats. There's the Afrobeat that is more, you know, will I say international. Mm -hmm. That, you know, people outside Nigeria can vibe to. But then there's lots of other stuff too that we listen to there. So in my in that EP, I tried to capture the full spectrum. You know, is the CK that was making this music in 2017 the same one that's hanging out here today? Absolutely, but I've just 
obviously grown. I've experienced a lot more stuff. Um, yeah, like I'm I'm at a much different place in life in general. But um, yeah, I would say I would say my first official EP, CK the First, which came out in 2019. That's that's where Love One Tinty came from. Yeah. It was in, it was track two, and on that EP as well, it was like it was basically me also trying to like show Afrobeats the past, present, and the future. The Afrobeats as I knew it at the time, and Afrobeats as I felt it should sound, you know. And I think it's so funny how you know Love One Tinty ended up blowing in the future, literally because. You know, that's how I felt Afrobeat should sound. But it didn't sound like that at the time. But I guess the world, you know, caught on to it and they caught up with the vibe. But like th- th- that is so true to so many incredible songs in history mm-hmm. that they've been around for so, like years before the world was even ready yeah. to enjoy them, share it and like spread it. You know what I mean? Yeah. So is, is One Dance by Drake considered Afro- like an Afrobeat? type song it's afrobeat infused how do you feel about it's not pure afrobeats how do you feel about artists using that in their music that are i mean it's it's calm it's cool yeah i mean you could do whatever but like the one thing i'm gonna just say still is like um afrobeats is music that represents a culture a people a very large population of people by the way like Nigeria is about 200 million people. Yeah. Casual. That's that's mm-hmm. a crazy number of people. <laughs> yeah. And like, in fact, Afrobeats doesn't represent just Nigerians. There's a huge Francophone demographic too in Africa that, you know, makes the same type of music, but like it just sounds slightly different, but it's still technically Afrobeats. You know? mm-hmm. So I feel any artist who is not from there, just has to you know do some research and actually understand where the music is coming from when we say stuff in the songs there there's a reason it connects with people because like in love wanting see unkwabi i want to chop your unkwabi unkwabi is a is an actual is a delicacy you know it's a nigerian delicacy and there's a sexual innuendo to that too to that line but then that's why it connects so heavy because people understand what it means it's not just a line it's not just melodies you know so i'll just say if anyone who's not nigerian or not african should just like you know attempt to understand the culture the music came from that's all that's not too much to ask it's not too much to ask <laughs> at all <laughs> by the way listen to ck's music there's going to be a link in the description below check it out uh it is down there what are you thinking so you've only released like EPs and mixtapes. Does that mean you're working on your debut album right now? Yes, I am. It comes out this year. Really, really excited about the album. Um, Is it done? I can't say. <laughs> 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 but like, um, yeah, one thing I'm going to say though is, like I mentioned earlier, like every time I make music, I listen to the music first, you know? So I like to listen to my music, you know what I mean? And most of the time, when I like my music, people like it too. You know what I mean? So if I think the album is really great, it means you're going to think it's great too. You know what I mean? And um, yeah, I'm super excited for it. Lots of emo Afro beats, lots more stories to tell, you know, um, more emotions to share with the world. And um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to listen. Are you telling a cohesive story with the album from top to bottom or is each song its own Absolutely. separate thing? Absolutely. It's a the whole album is about real stories, you know, and everything connects. Everything connects. Every single thing connects, yeah. Are you uh producing a lot of it yourself cuz like we mentioned Diplo, I also saw you were in the studio with David Guetta a couple months ago, right? Yeah, it's it's a it's both, you know, I'm producing some stuff. I have producers producing some stuff like yeah, I'm just I'm just really trying to make something something great, you know? Mm-hmm. And like to make something great, it involves people. It's not a it's not like a one man thing. So yeah, I worked with a whole lot of people. Talking about global, David Guetta is Yeah, massive. He's yeah. A legend. legend you know? <laughs> um What do you learn from being in the studio with him? 
I mean, I learned a lot just like from conversations about music and everything. You know, he comes from a a generation before mine, you know, and I actually feel like that generation had a very deep understanding of music, mm. you know. I feel like music from that generation was was crazy. Dude, they watched so many shifts in just how music w- was consumed, let alone the yeah. cultural shifts and the sonic shifts. Mm-hmm. It's, it was insane. And know? people like David Guetta have thrived through all all exactly, chapters. Exactly, exactly. So, and you know, I grew up listening to his music too. You know what I mean? So it was it was really exciting for me to meet him and be in the studio with him. Um, we met in London, and we made a bunch of records that I'm really excited about. And um, yeah, I can't wait for you guys to hear it too. Will you get into a studio while you're here in LA? Or is that where you with Di- Diplo? Yeah, I've been in the studio, and um, I will continue to be in the studio. Like almost every other day, I'm in the studio. I'm working constantly, working, trying to like you know vibe with people that I think are amazing, you know, and um, yeah. I'm just out here working, you know. I saw a lot of Camila Cabello's fans were real excited that she just followed you on Instagram. Yeah, <laughs> she's amazing. I think she's amazing. And it feels good to know that she feels the same about me, too. Yeah. Real recognizes real. What do I recognize as real? No, no real recognizes real. Oh, real, re- yeah, 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 absolutely. It is validation, <laughs> right, to hear from your peers? Absolutely. You know, these are people, I mean, Camila Cabello, huge star, you know what I mean? Makes great music. And um, she's someone I respect, too. Mm -hmm. So it feels good to have her, you know, kind of agree that I'm great, too. (laughs) (laughs) A seal of approval. Yeah. By the way, seriously, listen to CK's music. There's a link in the description below. Um, I mean, you've covered a lot here. The truth is small love is a, I call it small love. I I just, I I didn't really, I had heard the song, played the song. The most, and I really didn't know the translation <laughs> until I started preparing for this. Oh, for real? Yeah, I had no idea, but I knew that I, I could even say the lyrics because, again, it's like an emotional feeling. Exactly. It's not, you don't necessarily need to understand to emotionally connect. Exactly. And this is the same thing, like, even, you know, Spanish songs, Arab songs, when a song is great and it connects, like, nobody cares about the language, you know? Like, even back home, there's tons of songs that we listen to. Like in Nigeria, we don't speak Twi, and Twi is a Ghanaian language, but we listen to Ghanaian songs too in Nigeria. Like, you know, when a song is great, <laughs> we start speaking Twi because of the song. You know what I mean? Yeah. So it's it's the same everywhere. So wh- what language are you singing in again? Sorry, I just forget exactly how you, what it's, you said. It's a mixture of Igbo, I-G-B-O, and um, Pidgin English. So Pidgin English is like a, it's like a version of English spoken in West Africa. Okay. It's 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 English, but there's just lots of slang in mm-hmm. it, you know, and it's like lots of um traditional languages infused here and there. It's like a special version yeah. of English. <laughs> you think you'll always continue to sing in with that, with those different slangs? To be fair, I sing I express myself however, you know, it comes to me. Sometimes I may speak I may speak one word of French in a song or two. I mean, speak pidgin English. I mean, speak actual English. I mean, speak Evo. It just depends on the vibe and how yeah. I'm feeling. You know? How do you, uh, yeah. So it's feeling in that moment and what the beat gives you or yeah. the type of story you want to tell? It's both. The The beat gives me a feeling sometimes. Sometimes I give the beat the feeling, <laughs> you know. <laughs> it just it just depends on the vibe, you know. Music really is a universal language. Mm-hmm. It's crazy. Listen to CK, please. Link in the description below. There. Appreciate your time, man. Oh, the Thanks one, for having me. Other question I wanted to ask is, what was it like walking out on stage in New York for the first time? It was crazy, man. Like, um, the energy was great. People told me that New York crowds were stuck up <laughs> before the show. <laughs> and I was like, I was low-key nervous at first. But, like, getting there, like, the energy was so crazy, you know. I had such a good time. Who told you that? That's not a good way to get you ready for a show. I don't know, man. Like, I actually had a bunch of people tell me, you know. And really? I was like, oh, wow. The fact that, like, three people have told me this, maybe it's true. Yeah. But, like, I don't know. Maybe they were lying or maybe my fans are just great vibes in general. Yeah. Or both. I don't know. That's but, it. like, I know or that you, the energy was great. Or you bring out the great vibes in them. 
Exactly. They could be, they're laying dormant and you just <laughs> tap right into it. There's that too. <laughs> CK, appreciate you giving us time and energy today. Thank you. Thank you for having me.